Oh, hey, Quinn. What are you doing back here? Well, I guess it's your six-month appointment, so let's go ahead and get some x-rays on you. But let's go and talk about those x-rays that we're going to be taking today. Well, today we're going to be going over the concept of bite wings. We have a couple of instruments for taking bite wings, such as these little tabs that are little sticky doodads, or we have this like claw thingamabob that goes and stretches, that creases around. Or if you really have to use something, such as an instrument, these snap arrays biting down right in the middle should work out too. But let's go ahead and look at the image taking device that we have. Well, we have one of these old school films that we're going to be using here, but you know what? Let's not even go back to the past and let's just get this the hell out of here. Looks like I'm a better aim than I thought, but what's going to be in this cabinet? Hey, it's the future. We're going to go into digital. And look, we already have our sensor set up and I don't know what he's doing here, but let's go ahead and use the sensor that we have. I'll be with you in a moment. And so now we can go over the practice of doing a bite wing x-ray and the techniques with these different tools that we have. First, since we're going to be going into the person's mouth with all these different tools, we need to go ahead and get gloves. So where can I find some gloves at? Well, can, can you help me out right here, Quinn? What do you think? Oh, thanks. Got some... Uh, Got some pairs of gloves in there. Awesome. Thanks for doing that. You're always right there when I need you. So now we're all gloved up and let's go ahead and look at our instruments. Like I mentioned before, you can go and use one of these little sticky tabs. The flip side is going to have the actual wire and all the hardware that's behind here. Never put it on this side. So with these little bite tabs that we have here, they're nice and a little sticky. And with that, if I just go and peel one of these off and I fold it right in the middle, but leave these little T's off to the side, because this is a bite wing, we want to make sure that it's stuck right there in the dead center and that it's horizontal make sure that you go give it a little bit of push to fix it to the piece. And now we can go and take this to our actual x-ray dude over here. But if this isn't your jam, then we can go ahead and take this little piece off and move over to our little claw doodad that we have here. With this, all it is is a little stretchy bit that's going to hold onto the sensor. So if I just go and take this and get the first stretchy part on top, go and claw it over and stretch it to the bottom, now I can go and set this to be right in the middle, transfer right over to my patient's mouth, and then we're good to go. Other option that we have here also is using a snap array device, which I can go and take this and have it bite down right in the middle. Just be careful where the wire is because you might end up banging up the wire and making not a happy dentist when they come back to their equipment. So it's nice to stick to your, either your tabs or your claw doodads. First set I'm going to take over here on this x-ray is going to be with my little tabs. And with that, now I can go ahead and take this to the patient's mouth. But because Quinn's right here raring to go, I need to make sure that I'm raring to go with my actual x-ray tube, which is all the way over there with that guy. Hey, I told you I'll be with you in a moment, but can you kind of push that over here to me? Thanks, bud. Now I can go ahead and have this nearby so I can just go and aim it right at my patient as I need to. With that, when taking your sensor to the mouth, you always want to make sure you have a visual and know how where you're going to be placing this and where you're going to be taking an x-ray of. My setup over there is telling me to take a molar shot, as indicated by the green square in the molar position. So with that, go into my patient, just warn them, hey, we're gonna take an x-ray of, of the teeth in the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and have you open really wide, oh, that's a pretty good one, and take your sensor and place it in there. Now you don't wanna just go and jab them in there and have them go and swallow the whole bit, but you're going to want to place it carefully. With that, I can take my tab, place it in their mouth, getting in between the tongue and the teeth, and I can have my patient go and bite down, but you always want to tell them first the speed. You don't want to tell them to bite down slowly because as soon as they hear bite, all of a sudden you lose a finger. So I had to go ahead and hit them with the speed first, then the action. But hey, I'm gonna have you slowly bite down right there. And as they bite down, hoping that they can claim some fingers of their own, I'm just gonna be holding this in place and slipping my fingers out just in time. Now I go and look at where my actual tab is placed. As you can see, I have my tab far enough back where they're biting down on their second and their first molar and just a hair on their second premolar. That's okay, we can make that work. But now I have an idea on what to aim for. But now we go back to our next part, our actual tube head. With that comes the tricky part, is the aim. We're gonna be taking a picture of half the top teeth, half of the bottom teeth, how they come together, and the spaces in between that shows us the interproximals. With that, we need to go and take that into mind because as I go and aim my x-ray tube, I can't just go and aim and it be pointing at their front teeth. We're looking at their posterior, their rear teeth. And so with that, I know that my molars is what I'm aiming for. A nice landmark spot is right here, which is the outer canthus, the outer edge of their eye or their eyebrow, unless it's fake and painted on there, is going to be a good indicator where their actual molars are. 
as I see their outer eye matched up with their molars, I can just go ahead and give that a nice little position and aim at that. Of course, you always want to make sure that you're slicing right through the contacts of the teeth so that we don't get overlap because of our incorrect aiming. I'm going to go and do a little trick, which is called CPR, which is going to be center of the contact, position it for the tooth, raise it to position. All you're going to be doing is essentially going and aiming this right at the teeth where you can slice through the contacts of the tooth. And you can use the line on your actual PID, your tube head, to go and draw an imaginary line as it goes and pierces through the two teeth. Cool, that's my center. Now I need to position it. What type of tooth am I aiming for? Molars or premolars? Well, like I said, molars are the outer side of the eye, so I have my centering, I have my positioning. Now I can just go ahead and raise it up so that I have half of my x-ray beam for the top teeth, half the x-ray beam from the bottom. From a side view, it looks just like so. Half the beam is up, half the beam is down. The smile line that we have on this person matches the horizontal line right here on the side of my PID, and I can go and take my x-ray. With that, we can go and run for cover, and we just go outside, hold the button, yell clear, and we go back in to look at our results, which right here, I can see I got a decent result, but I still have some overlapping that's happening on some of these photos. So we can go and make some changes to that. Now that I got that x-ray, all I have to do is just move this ever so slightly out of the way as I go and reposition for my next shot. Don't be one of those people that go and say, okay, I'm done with this for this first shot and just throwing it out of the way so that you can't even reach for it for the next shot. Just move it a little bit. As I go and say, hey, I'm going to have you open a slight bit, you can gently creep it forward a little bit and have them bite down right there and resume their next spot. Now you see that my position of the actual tab has shifted, where it's not majority molars, it's majority premolars in this shot. So now I can have something to aim for. Like I mentioned before, center it right here in the middle of the premolars, position it so that we are in that premolar region, which matches up with this inside eye of the edge, and then we'll raise it so that it's half top, half bottom. So like I mentioned, center it in between the contacts, position it so that it's aiming at the inside of the eye range for the premolars, and then raise it for half top, half bottom. And we go and check our x-ray result. And as we come over here to see the live feed, now we have an all right shot with spaces in between these premolars and a little bit of space that's open for the molars. Not too bad, gently move it out of the way, remove the x-ray tab from their mouth, uh, and now we move over to the other side, where we're going to switch from the bite wing doodad to now the claw thingamabob. Now starting on the left side, since we have this claw thingamabob, I can just go ahead and attach it just like so. Have my patient open really big, place it for my premolars because that's where my next step is on my set. And now what's different is since you don't have that tab showing you what you're aiming for, you need to rely on knowing your positioning in the mouth. And right now I'm taking a premolar shot. I'm going to still do the same type of actions. Take this over here to the edge, center this in between some contacts. You can see right now that if I go and rock this upwards, I can see that this line cuts through those contacts. I'm going to position it for the inner eye for my premolars, and I'm just going to raise it up into the place. Here's the live shot. Not too bad as far as clearing a lot of contacts. We have very light overlapping right here and missing a slight bit of the mesial premolar in this shot. Not too bad though. Going back over here, I'm gonna have you open a slight bit, scoot that a little bit to the rear for the molars, bite down, center position raise, and we come back to see the results. And so that's the whole concept between bite wings. Center it between the teeth so that instead of it being overlapping, we have distinction between one tooth and the other. We go and position it for either the back teeth, the molars, or the front teeth, premolars. And then we can either can raise it or we can rotate it into position to make sure that we are nice and straight. Another key tip to this is that right here over on the side of these x-ray tubes, there tends to be this line that will go and tell us what degrees that we should be aiming at. You'll find it that a lot of times when we are going through, uh, that we are at a nice horizontal angle, which is zero degrees, plus or minus five, depending on that personal preference. The main concept for when we're trying to cure overlapping is when we are taking our shot and we're lining it up to go and split between the contacts of the teeth. If you have a wonky angle just like this tube head is, try and take a picture of the premolars. All these rays are going to be directed going in this odd type of direction where they're going to overlap with each other. 
And so we want to straighten it up so that we are coming through the contact, not overlapping the contact. So with that, this position of this tube head would be adjusted to about yay angle. And so now with this, we have something that can actually cross through some of those actual contacts as we have here. And not every bite wing is going to be simple where to fix overlap, we can just go ahead and just gently curve our tube head left and right. You're going to have to look at the curvature of the teeth to see if someone has a nice curve of their arch or they have some weird squiggly arch movement where you're going to have to take an angle from this direction and an angle from that direction to get everything to clear and open. Also, as a tip when taking x-rays, when you're going forward and trying to get the sensor to get up into the premolar area, you might need to do this trick by going in, moving it forward, tilting it more towards the other sides or toward the tongue, then you can go make your horizontal movement and take your aim and fire, getting those contacts open. Remember, when taking x-rays, we are taking a picture of an imperfect object. So, if your x-rays come out wonky where some of them are great and some of them are not, it might be because the arch or the teeth are just all jacked and cracked and messed up. With that, don't sweat it. You get better as you go along. We all start from somewhere and we get better and better the more x-rays we take. The only thing is our imperfect objects are always going to be changing. Hopefully, this video was able to help you with your bite wings or learning it, and we'll see you next time, hopefully talking about more dental things. With all that said, check out the other dental videos I have to see what other dental things we're able to do. Make sure to subscribe to see future videos and see you later.